I'm gonna make it on my own. I'm gonna do it on my own. I'm gonna create my dreams all by myself. I'm a self-made millionaire. It's time for some myth busting, folks. Is it really true that anyone who is living their dreams did it on their own? And I'm gonna show you the sneaky ways that this belief might be showing up in your life and might be derailing your chances of creating your own dream life, your own dream career. Stay tuned. I'm self-made. I am a self-made business owner who is extremely successful and will continue to be successful. I'm a self-made millionaire. I'm a self-made tech leader who has made a ton of impact. I did it on my own. As you could probably tell, and as I know that part of you knows, this is not true, this is a myth. But let's really dig in. Let's peel the layers back in true people stack style on this myth of being self-made. So we're not gonna have to do, go through the whole, a whole episode <laughs> until I tell you, is it a myth or is it the truth? It is an absolute myth that anyone who is living their dreams is self-made and did it on their own. It's a myth, it's not true. What's the truth? They had help, basically. They co-created this dream with others. And so, while the logical part of you may be like, oh yeah, 100%, I'm with you. Great, awesome, I'm gonna preach to the choir a little bit here, so that's the only way you make him sing, so I'm gonna make your heart sing a little bit if you're 100% following with me. Keep, keep on, keep it on, keep on listening. But what I also want to make you aware of is even though this may seem obvious, that no one's self-made, Everyone has help. It takes a village, right? It takes a village to raise a kid. It takes a village to create your dream career. It's the truth. We know this. We know this logically. We know this intellectually. And yet, where I want to start is by explaining the sneaky ways that this belief of being self-made, I'm going to do it on my own. I don't need anyone to help me. I don't want anyone's help. I don't need anyone's assistance. I just need to sit and figure this out on my own first. How this belief, this set of beliefs, can sneakily, without even you knowing it, be the thing, the main hurdle, the main, well, really, wall, because it can feel really hard to break through, <laughs> and you can break through it, but this may be the thing that is keeping you from living your dream life, the belief that you're gonna do it on your own, the belief that you have to be self-made, the belief that you have to be the man or the woman or the bread earner, breadwinner in the family, may be what's keeping you from creating, co-creating, your dream life and your dream career. So we see this all the time with our badass clients. 100% of our clients are accomplished, badass, authentic, servant, technical leaders. And we see it time and time again in lots of different ways. So as I explain these mini case studies, I want you just for a moment to take a look and, and notice when you're doing these kinds of things. They may not be exactly the same, but they may, they, that there's an air of truth. I promise that in these mini case studies that I'm about to share, there's an air of truth in at least one of them, if not all of them for most of you. 
And there's power in recognizing, oh, I'm holding myself back. Oh, yeah, I've done that. I don't want to do that anymore. I'm not going to tolerate that. So the first place where we see this showing up is in the decision to get help with your career. So many of our clients put off that decision to hire us, to work with us. You know, and then after working with us, they then tell us this, and so this is how we know this is the truth. And I've done this. I think we've all done this. I believe that we've all done this in some way, maybe not necessarily in the context of your career, but perhaps in other areas of your life, in your fitness, your fitness goals, your um, weight loss goals, things like that. Uh, nutrition goals, relationship goals, monetary goals that might be outside of your career, like building a business, for example. So what we see happening is that people will reach out to us from a place of curiosity, from a place of interest. Maybe I need help, but I'm not sure. There's something going wrong in my career right now. There's something going on in my life right now that I definitely need help with. And there's something that's not working in my career. That there's a problem that needs to be solved. There's, there's, there's a challenge that needs to be conquered. And I'm, there, there's stuff that I'm tolerating and it just sucks. And I'm, and I'm interested in seeing if someone else can help me with this. That's where a lot of you are right now. That's why you're listening because we can help, as long as you're open to that help. And there's the rub. So many of our clients hesitated either in initially even booking a call with us, or they would book a call with us, and we offer them a spot to work with us. We only do that if we're 100% confident. And then they decide, well, I'm going to wait. And the reason that they waited And this is where a lot of you are right now. You're playing the waiting game potentially to your demise and the demise of your career. You're playing the waiting game. I'm not going to reach out for help. I'm going to wait because I need to figure this out on my own first. Jen keeps talking about needing clarity about exactly what I want in my career. I don't even know what I want in my career. I don't even know what's not working in my career. I need to figure that out on my own first. That's a way this shows up. And it's a myth. It is not true that you need to figure it out on your own first. That's why a lot of our clients hire us. I don't know. I'm feeling terrible. I don't get it. It's like I haven't had more than a 10% raise or a 5% raise in the last five, 10 years, and it sucks. I'm stuck at 250K a year or 200K a year or 300K a year, and I know that I can make more, and I'm just, I'm like tearing my hair out trying to figure out why all of my friends are getting promotions. Or, you know what, the money's good, but I, I, I have to work. I feel like I have to work 80 hours a week, 70 hours a week, 60 hours a week. I'm just, I'm burnt out, and I don't want to take it anymore. But I need to, yeah, I know you guys are experts and I want to hire you or I, maybe I want to work with you, but I got to figure this out on my own first. And just logically look at that, you know? And even just like laugh at yourself from a place of self-love, like, really? <laughs> like, that's exactly why you need help. <laughs> it's like the new mom with the, with the six-week-old infant being like, oh my God, I'm not sleeping, I'm not eating, and I need to take care of this baby. And the whole community is coming to them. Here, here's a lasagna. I'll watch after the kid while they're napping. Don't worry, I got it. I've raised five kids. And the mom's like, no, I got to figure this out on my own. (laughs) It would be crazy, right? Like, stop with the crazy. And I'm saying this with love, right? (laughs) Like, I need to figure this all out on my own first. Or like, I know what I want, I want a promotion. I want to raise, I want a hell yes job. I want to do this while I'm having so much fun and making an impact and building a legacy and all of the things that you're talking about. 
the case studies that we share and the celebrations that we share and the client wins that we share, like, oh my God, that, that resonates so much with me. That's, there, there's lots of pieces of that for what, what I want. Yes, 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 that's what I want. And you know what, I'm gonna figure it out on my own. And I'm here to tell you with love that, you know what, I'm gonna ask a question instead. How's that working? Seriously, trying to figure it out on your own, how is that working? Most likely it's not, and that's why you're listening. Now, I wanna be really clear here. I am not here to take your power away. You are a powerful, badass, authentic servant leader. You are, and don't let anyone, including yourself, tell you that you're otherwise, and that's why you're asking for help. Asking for help is a sign of strength, not weakness. When the new mom, when mama bear says, yeah, you know what, I need to sleep, take this, <laughs> take the baby, <laughs> I need to go sleep, that's a sign of strength because I know what I need, I know what I'm capable of, and I know my limits, and I know I need to refuel my power. I, need, I, I know I need to put my oxygen mask on first, and then yeah, I'm gonna help others, but you know what? If for whatever reason, my oxygen mask is tangled or it isn't working, what am I gonna reject it from someone else? No, I'm gonna say thank you, and then I'm gonna go and help whoever I can and, we're gonna, and we're, we're gonna save the entire community. We're gonna save the entire village together. I'm not saying to give your power away. I'm saying take it back by asking for help. Now, this may be relevant in your career, but it may be relevant in any area of your life. Ah, I'm not fit enough to go to the gym. Laugh at it, folks. We've all done it. It's funny because it's true. I can't go to the gym. I'm not strong enough. It's the same thing. I can't hire a career coach yet. I don't know what I want in my career. Same thing. I can't hire a career coach yet. I'm not confident enough. That's exactly why. That's exactly why. So that's definitely one area where I mean, I'm calling them a mini case study, but it's more of like a collective case study in that so many of our clients show up that way. So check to see what's resonating. Notice and then shift from a place of power and ask for help when it's needed. Own your zone of genius. And when there's something that you haven't figured out yet, like how to earn more money, like how to make more of an impact as a technical leader, like how to do that without working your ass off. If you haven't figured that out yet, ask for help. Stop banging your head against the wall. So another way that this shows up for our clients is in the dreaming part, is in the what am I capable of? Like what's the promotion that I want? So it shows up like, well, I've been a, you know, just as an example, I've been an engineering manager and I've actually been in the role of director of engineering. I've, done, I've been in both of those roles. Um, so what's next for me? I know I want more, I want to expand. So yeah, director of engineering feels good. But when you really peel the layers back, take a look at what the impact that you've truly made, and when you also connect with your desire to expand and evolve, you realize the director of engineering is just staying the same. It's just staying the same. Because that's what you've already done. That's what you've always done. And what would be a truly expansive role because it's the next level, literally here, would be a VP. But oh no, I, I can't be a VP yet. I can't go after a VP role. I gotta, you know, I gotta figure this out myself first. 
Like I gotta, I gotta do some work myself first before I, before I'm a VP. I gotta get more certifications. I gotta get more letters after my name. I need to do more homework. I need to do more studying. You know, I need to get my MBA or I need to do some studying around leadership. I need to learn about fiscal responsibility. I don't even know what it, that is, but I hear that money is a huge piece of being a VP because they give you a budget. I know nothing about fiscal responsibility. I need to do all this stuff on my own and figure all this stuff out on my own first before I can ever go after a VP job. Myth. It's a myth. Because first of all, you figure it out, you learn it along the way. And do you learn it all on your own? No, others help you. Others help you do that. And second of all, kind of tangential to, to today's topic, but still worth pointing out, and then I'll get back on track. You are totally capable of it. You just don't realize it yet. And so that speaks to confidence, again. And so that's why it actually is related. It's your... your you're still, your confidence is still evolving. And so that's why you feel like you still need to do stuff on your own and you're not capable of the VP or that next level stretch level goal because your confidence is still evolving. If your confidence was 100% spot on, you'd be like, yeah, let's go for the VP. I gotta, I gotta ask for some help here, <laughs> right? <laughs> like really feel into it, your most badass self, Hey, I'm capable of that, capable of that. All right, Avengers, unite, <laughs> right? I need help. So here's what I'm saying. I know that a lot of you have been able to read between the lines in the shift that I'm inviting you to make here. It's, yes, it's a mindset shift. It's a myth-busting shift. It's also a, an identity shift. It's also a behavioral shift as well because it involves different decisions and different behaviors. So where I want you to shift from is a place of believing that I need to do this on my own. I need to figure this out on my own. I need to become self-made. I need to be the man, the woman in the family. I need to be the breadwinner. I can't ask for help. I need to do this on my own. I need to get fit. I need to get confident. I need to do all of this thing before I ask for help. I want you to shift from that place. I want you to shift from a place of, I'm not capable of asking for help. If I ask for help, I'm not confident. These are all the don't do's, by the way, <laughs> right? Asking for help is a sign of weakness. I'm not gonna ask for help. I'm just gonna keep spinning my wheels, banging my head against the wall, trying to figure this out on my own. I want you to shift from all of that to a place of, it takes a village to build a dream. To a place of, I cannot create my dreams on my own. I must co-create them with others. If there's one thing to write down from this one, it's that. I cannot create my dreams on my own. I must co-create them with others. One of my friends has recently talked about this concept of differentiated communion, where that is the vibe, that is the essence, that is the energy of who we are as humans. Differentiated communion. We are, we are differentiated humans Right, we all are unique, we are. We all have our own vibe, we all have our own essence, we all have our own soul's desire, and there's an, there's an aspect of communion. We are social animals. And so here's this thing I want, I have to figure it out on my own, is completely neglecting, ignoring the communion, the social aspect of who we are. It can go the other way too though, by the way. Some of you may be picking this up. For some of you, it's, I'm just gonna follow what other people are doing. I'm not gonna decide at all what it is that I want. Instead of going really internal, I gotta figure this out on my own, I gotta process this, oh man, I gotta do a whole bunch of internal work, not true. Well, it is true, but get help to do it because otherwise you're just gonna keep banging your head against the wall. So it is true that there's internal work, 
involved here, but if that internal work is not working and not getting you the results that you want, and it doesn't feel fun, and it doesn't feel like your dream life, then get help. But for some of you, you're going completely external. I'm just gonna follow what these other lemmings are doing, and I'm not gonna go internal at all, and I'm just gonna be 100% social, and that's forgetting the differentiated piece of it. Who are you? What do you want? What is your soul's desire? So anyway, you're shifting to this place where I cannot create my dreams on my own. I must co-create them with others. Remember the my dreams and remember the co-create, differentiated communion. The communion is the co-creation. The differentiation is my dream. And so from that place, it's I am capable. I am confident. I want this, I desire this, and I know I'm going to get it, and I'm going to take ownership, and I'm going to show up, and I'm going to put my oxygen mask on first, and I'm going to ask for help when it's needed. I'm going to ask for help. That's the shift. That's the behavioral shift, the decision shift. Instead of trying to decide what the next thing that I need to do on my own is and go internal, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna reach out. I'm gonna go external, and I'm gonna ask for help. Whether this is in your career, at work, in your relationships, in your fitness, in any aspect of your life. Stop trying to figure it out on your own. Being self-made is a myth. Every single person who has ever co-created their dream life, who is living their dream life, has co-created it with others. I'm gonna give you one more visualization to really bring this home, to feel the truth of it, to feel the certainty in the fact that your dreams are co-created and you have power, you have control over that. And if you take that power away, you're not gonna get the full force of your dreams. Don't take that, the power of co-creation, of asking for help from others. Don't let, don't make that decision and diminish the power of your dreams. Make the decision to get help. So, what I invite you to do is simply remember one of the best moments of your life. If you could, take a deep breath. Close your eyes if it helps, not if you're driving. <laughs> but whatever's safe to do, take a deep breath. What is, what has been the best moment, one of the best moments in your life so far? What's on your heart? Maybe it's the moment your child was born. Maybe it's the moment you got married or found the love of your life. Maybe it's the day you landed your dream job. Maybe it's the day you got that first raise. Maybe it's the moment that you moved into your current home, which feels so much like home. Maybe it was the day you decided that enough's enough, I'm ta enough's enough, I'm taking a vacation, and you took a vacation to somewhere amazing. Those awesome, amazing, best life moments. Did you do it on your own? No. I guarantee you, you did not. Did you show up like your badass, powerful self? Uh-huh, you betcha. Wouldn't have been a best moment in your life if that wasn't true. And were there others involved? Yes, 100%. Your family, your loved ones, your children, your community, your friends, your coworkers, other random people that you didn't even know. 
One of my most vivid vacation memories, best moment in my life vacation memories, involved, it was, I was in Paris with Rob, love of my life, best friend, husband. We were in Paris and we were, it was in the evening and we were walking along the Seine, walking along the river and it was very, very quiet. The stars were twinkling. And then, seemingly out of nowhere, magically, a man with an accordion appeared. <laughs> it just started playing the accordion. And we just, we just danced right there. Like, we're not, like, I'm a little bit romantic. We're, we're both a little bit romantic, but this isn't something that, like, we would normally do. Um... But it was just that moment, you know, yes, so it involved the love of my life, but it also involved this other random gentleman, I never even found out his name, playing an accordion. It always involves someone else. That moment was co-created. Yes, by me and by Rob and by the accordion player and by other forces as well. If you want to get mystical, spiritual about it, you can absolutely do that too. That can be really fun. And if that feels fun, I invite you to do that. That co-creation isn't just about co-creating with other humans. It's also about co-creating with other forces, enter entities, entities, <laughs> entities, energies. So you cannot create your dreams on your own. You must co-create them with others. And for some of you, this is resonating so deeply and you're feeling this pull, this fun pull, now is the time. I need help in my career. Enough's enough with banging my head against the wall, trying to figure this out on my own, trying to make myself a self-made, amazing technical leader. I know that I need help with this. So it's time to explore the idea of working with experts who can guide me on this journey of becoming even more, the more confident, more badass version of me. So if you're feeling that pull, book a call with us, thepeoplestack.com slash book, T-H-E peoplestack.com slash B-O-O-K. That's gonna bring you to our calendar page. The calendar's gonna show up pick your time zone, and then pick a time that works for you so that you can show up unencumbered, uninterrupted, so that you can show up for an audio-only Zoom call. So it's audio-only, so you don't have to, it doesn't have to be a fancy schmancy background or anything like that, just as long as it's a quiet place where you can have an amazing conversation. So what's gonna happen is one of my team members is gonna show up, they're gonna ask you, a series of amazing, powerful, heart-opening, soul-opening questions. And you're gonna get clarity on what's not working in your career right now and where you wanna go. And if we're 100% confident that it would be a fit to work together, then we might invite you to become one of the new clients that we take on this month. And it's always your decision whether to say yes or no. Boundaries are huge with us. You always get a yes or a no but we do want to invite you if you feel like, you know, this is going to be a fit because it's going to be an amazing thing to, to find the coach for you, the guide for you to help you create your dreams. And if for whatever reason it's not a fit, you're still going to leave the call as long as you show up coachable. That's the requirement. That's all you have to prepare. I'm going to be coachable. I'm going to be open. I'm going to empty my cup. I'm going to answer the questions on the phone right then and there. Nothing else you need to do to prepare. Nothing else you need to do on your own <laughs> to prepare for this call. There's nothing that you need to do before this call to prepare. We do ask, though, that you, you only book the call if you're feeling this call. <laughs> to book the call, if you're feeling that pull, if what I'm saying is resonating. Because that's the only way that you're gonna get an amazing value out of the conversation. If you're just interested, if you're looking for band-aids, if you're like, oh, who are these people? Let me find out what they're about. How do they make money? 
that's not the conversation we want to have. The conversation we want to have is an eye-opening, soul-opening, holy cow, holy shit, this is my dream and I want to create it, how do I do it, conversation. So if that's what you're ready for, and show up coachable, you're going to get that clarity. Again, the, the link to book the call is thepeoplestack.com slash book. Being self-made is a myth. Having to do it on your own is a myth. We are all co-creating at every single moment, whether you realize it or not. What I'm asking is that you realize it so that you can intentionally put your focus on what you want to co-create while you help others to co-create what they want. That's the essence of being a world-class badass technical leader. Welcome to the journey. Welcome to the ex never-ending expansion of living your dream. Okay, aloha, take care, talk to you soon. Bye, friends.